Welcome back to Tech Air City. This is Brian coming back to you guys today with some gameplay commentary over a game called Cars 2. Now, I just picked this game up and I wanted to start playing it with my little boy when he's old enough to play video games. And it's kind of a friendly, fun game, so I'm kind of enjoying it, even though I'm still a noob at it. But uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about CPU cache. It's more, it's something that's an interesting topic to me because it's something that I've noticed, especially with this year when I've come through three different, or actually five different CPUs, but more specifically, I've tested the FX uh, 8320, I tested the i5-4670K, and I've tested now the 5820K. And it kind of feels to me like the more level 3 case you have on board the CPU, the better it is for gaming, whether it actually affects FPS or not. Uh, so in the past, I mean, Tom's have done a great article where they've tested two CPUs, pretty much identical except the one CPU had no level 3 cache on board, and it actually made a direct difference to frame rates. But what I'm more interested in is, does level 3 uh, cache affect actual frame latencies as well? That's something I really want to test. So maybe I can maybe pit a, two, a dual core Pentium against my i5-4670K with half its cores disabled. I think that would give some interesting results. So if you guys want to see a test like this, let me know in the comments below. I think it'd be pretty interesting uh, actually testing the frame latencies and does it affect smoothness of gameplay because one thing I've noticed with my 5820K is how it's just butter smooth in everything. Like I never get a hiccup in pretty much any game now with my GDX 970. It's just an absolute butter smooth experience and I can recommend it to people who have, I guess, a bit of extra money to blow. But, I mean, honestly, is it worth an extra four, or $500, the additional costs over an FX rig or an i5 rig? Certainly not. I mean, the i5 and the FX8320 played games perfectly well. Uh, it's one thing I wanted to talk about, too, with the FX8320. It felt like, you know, in the rare occasion when the games were sort of frame for frame, when the i5 at 1080p was the same frames as the FX8320, it felt like the FX was slightly smoother. And it's something that I didn't really mention in my in my benchmarking, but now that I've got the 5820K, I can kind of confirm that, yeah, the more Ks you have on the CPU, the better it is for gaming, in my opinion. Uh, I just have to get more solid tests and more solid results with maybe frame latency. But uh, the FX8320 wasn't a bad CPU for gaming. It's just the problem with the FX series is, was the IPCs, especially on those CPU uh, single or dual core games, it really let the FX series, the IPC really let the FX CPU down. But on multi core games, like, I mean, multi threaded games like uh, Battlefield 4, it was pretty, it was okay. It was, good, it was a good gaming experience on that CPU. But so another thing that kind of supports my theory uh, that it affects smoothness of gameplay is that a few people have messaged me uh, saying that they're on the 760K, uh, the AMD sort of four core CPU with no level three cache. And they're telling me that their gaming experience absolutely sucks on this CPU. And I've had a few messages now, it's kind of similar with this. And and I mean, this CPU, if you look at it, it's, it's I mean, it looks like good value for money on the surface. Uh, however, it doesn't have any level 3 cache at all. So maybe if you're on a 760K, you can put your experience in the comment section below. That's if you've tried, say, an i7 or something or an i5, you've tried to step up CPU as well. So let me know because a lot of people have been messaging me saying that, yeah, they're on these uh, budget CPUs and they're not getting a game, good gaming experience, even coupled with something like an R7. Uh, oh, sorry, an R9-270X. So that's something that I'd really like to test as well. Maybe I should get my hands on a 760K and let you guys know if this CPU is actually a good CPU for gaming. Uh, so yeah, level 3 cache, I do believe it is an important factor in, uh, especially for games. And I mean, level 2 cache and level 1 cache, they're pretty important as well. I mean, you look at the Skyrim benchmarks that I did with the uh, 4670K versus the 3570K, and that kind of yielded uh, some big increases in Skyrim, which is kind of a CPU cache dependent game. So CPU cache definitely makes a difference for gaming. Just I would like to test how much, especially when it comes to frame latencies. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of vlog commentary about CPU cache. Uh, I do want to do some more research on it. And if you like this commentary, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any experiences or you have any of your own tests, then please share them in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Anyway, I'm going to go now and I guess I might play some more cars too. So peace out for now. Bye.